Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Be Welcome to worship on this Reformation Festival Sunday and Confirmation Sunday as we give thanks to God for that gift of faith that he's given to us and as we hear it publicly affirmed by our confirmands this morning. We'll also hear God's promises to us in the book of Hebrews, which promises that in Jesus we have something better, something better even than all of the Old Testament promises, something fulfilled for you and for me and for all people today, that in Jesus he guarantees that you have a better covenant. This morning the entire worship service is printed out for you. We will begin with the call to worship bells and then for the opening hymn. When the music for the opening hymn starts, then please stand as you're able. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you for all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you for all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son, that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Confirmation is, and of itself, a bit of a tradition, and in every congregation, uh, various traditions grow up around the celebration and observation of confirmation. Here at Holy Cross, one of our traditions is to ask each of our uh, confirmands to share a short uh, witness statement, a statement of their own faith, and each of them have also been assigned a topic from our confirmation classes to reflect on for a few minutes. And we're going to begin hearing those witness statements now as we begin with Isaiah. Hello, my name is Isaiah Galartes. In person as a Christian, follow the Christ, I believe in a lot of things about Jesus. So the main points of my belief include Jesus' death on the cross, Jesus' resurrection and conquering of death, Jesus being the Son of God, and Jesus will return again and we will be with him in paradise. But I would not have been able to learn about and get my faith in Christ without some people to guide me along my journey in faith. One example is my parents. From a very young age, they got me baptized, and that started my journey in Christ. My parents would be sure to take me to church every Sunday along with Sunday school to educate me in my faith. Along with my parents, there are people like Sunday school teachers who also help me in my faith. I had to learn more about God and have a deeper understanding. I learned about the Bible stories, Jesus, God, and what it means to be a Christian. As I got older, my parents would get me Bibles that I could read, and I was, able to learn, I was able to learn a lot from that, too. I was really able to understand the services given by the pastor with things like communion and the sermons. Lots of people have helped me in my faith, and those are just some of the ways they have. While I've grown a lot in my faith, I also have a lot of growing left to do. That's why, as I look ahead in my faith, I intend to keep growing, learning, believing, and understanding God. I intend to try to live by God's words and overall show what it means to be a follower of Christ. I would like to be received as an adult member in the church because I believe it is another step in my faith in Christ. Being an adult member would allow me to take communion, but also allow me to be more involved in the church and its community. As an adult member of the church, I would serve it by giving my time. Whether it's helping with VBS, baking pies, or doing charitable work, I want to be an adult member of the church and will serve it to the Lord as one as well. Going through confirmation these past years, we talked about and learned a lot. Some of the things we learned about were baptism, our role as a Christian, communion, how God helped us in our lives, how we can live a holy life, and more. The topic I was given was Holy Communion. Holy Communion is a vital and big part of our belief as a Christian. Holy Communion serves as a reminder, but also helps us in our faith. We take part in Holy Communion. It serves as a reminder of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It reminds us how he died for us, how he came down to earth, how we should remember him, and how he gave himself for us. It also helps in our faith when taking part in Holy Communion because it helped us grow a deeper connection to God. 
We are baptized, we become part of God's family. But through confirmation, we become an adult member. And one of the things that come with that is sitting at the Lord's table, that is communion. Doing that lets us have a deeper connection to God, and just like Jesus said, it is his body and blood that is given for us. It allows us to have a seat at God's table and have our own say, beliefs, and faith in Christ. Some people I'd like to thank, without them I can never be where I am now, include my father and mother for raising me to grow into Christ while also raising a Christian household, doing things like praying before every meal, praying before bed, and regularly attending church. I'd like to thank the pastors and Sunday school teachers for educating me and helping me understand Christ. Lastly, I'd also like to thank the whole congregation for creating a safe and friendly environment where we can come, where we can come together as Christians and believe in Christ. Good morning, my name is Jack. I believe Jesus died for our sins so that we can have eternal life. My parents and my family have helped me grow in my faith in Jesus by having me baptized, talk, taking me to Sunday school, confirmation, confirmation and church. As I look ahead, I would, I would like to live out my faith by going to church and youth group. One of the things we learned in confirmation was that Jesus rescued us from sin and death. He did this by living a perfect earthly life and dying on the cross in our place. He fully endured the wrath of God toward all people. Then he conquered death by rising from the dead and appearing to his disciples. His resurrection confirms he is the son of God. His teaching is true. God accepted his sacrifice and all the people who believe in Christ will rise to eternal life. Thank you to my family for bringing me to faith and my prayer partners Jane and Roy for praying for me. Hi, my name is Cora. I'm in grade eight and I would like to start by talking about Sunday school. When I was younger, I went to Sunday school and had lots of fun learning about God. Then just this summer, I went to a Christian camp. It was amazing how much I've learned. I felt like I was even closer to God. I believe that Jesus died for us, he will always forgive us, and we will all go to heaven one day. I'm so grateful that my parents were able to take me to church and being in a Christian household means that we pray to thank God before our meals and before we go to bed. As humans, we all sin. I recognize that and am always trying to change for the better. I would like to be received as an adult member of Holy Cross because I have attended this church my whole life and I intend to continue growing my faith here with my church family by helping in VBS and Sunday school and helping the community with their needs. I remember learning about baptism, although I can't remember it. I know that it's an amazing blessing. I was baptized at Zion Lutheran Church in Augsburg on May 22nd, 2011. I am so grateful for that experience, knowing that I am forgiven my sins and rescued from death and the devil. We will always have God's spirit and eternal life waiting for us. A big part of baptism is God helping us in life. After we are baptized, God will help us in life. Like this verse from John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I would like to thank my dad, mom, my godparents, Uncle John and Aunt Sam, my prayer partners, Jack and Elaine, my Sunday school teachers and confirmation teachers, the pastors and everyone else who supports me. Thank you. Hello, my name is Layton. As I sat down and began writing this, there was a quote that helped lead my way. Faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace, so sure and certain that a man could stake his life on a thousand times. I believe in Jesus. I believe he is perfect and creates everything with a purpose. All things around me, including myself, were made with his hands to do great things in my life. Jesus has walked with me during my difficult moments I have faced and has celebrated with me during my triumphs. My parents, grandparents, and those around me have shown me and surrounded me with the word of God and demonstrated what God's love looks like. In times when I have not understood things within my faith, they have given answers to any questions I have had. As I continue to journey through my faith, I intend to live my life with a strong character, to demonstrate loyalty to those who have trusted in me, to live my life serving others around me with an open and caring heart, 
never passing judgment on others, always remembering who loved me first. I am happy that the church and congregation will receive me as an adult member and that I can come to Holy Communion. It is important for me to solidify my faith in this church and my place in this family at Holy Cross. I hope to become a contributing member of this congregation by serving those who call, using my hands and heart to help those in need and growing in faith. One thing that I learned from confirmation class that will always weigh on my heart and mind is that the Holy Spirit is God, that he is one of the three persons within the Trinity, that through his word I will be kept in true faith, that he will lead, help lead me to repentance and by the gospel bring me to faith. Through my faith, the Holy Spirit will help guide me through my life, being at the forefront of my decision making. At this time, I would like to say thank you to everybody who has brought me to this place, for praying for me, have been a beacon of light in my faith. Thank you to my parents for unconditionally loving me, my grandparents for guiding me and helping me with rides to and from classes. Thank you to my pastors and my confirmation teachers who took the time to help me learn more about my faith, and to the congregation for always making me feel welcome. Hello, my name is Jackson. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. I have grown in my faith as my parents brought me to church, church since I was born and baptized here at Holy Cross. I will continue to grow my faith through attending church regularly. I would like to be received as an adult member to continue to grow my faith through having communion. I plan to serve the Lord as an adult member by joining church groups or ushering during services. One of the things we learned in class was how God the Father cared for his creation. He is always with us and watching over us. God the Father looks after the heavens and earth with his protection and providing. He provides the rain for the grass to grow, food for the animals to eat, and shelter for all living things. I would like to be, take this opportunity to thank my parents for raising me in a Christian home. I'd also like to thank my Sunday school teachers and pastors for guiding me through my faith. My very small bit of instructing this confirmation class was to help you them prepare their witness statements. And uh, I will say this is one of the easier years. Um, uh, they all seem to get it pretty good. And uh, I hope you were able to be uh, blessed by hearing uh, their confessions at this time in their lives. Our praise singers uh, have our anthem for us this morning.
first of our scripture readings this morning is from the seventh chapter of the letter to the Hebrews, where we are told that our Lord Jesus Christ is the guarantor of a better covenant. And it was not without an oath. For those who formerly became priests were made such without an oath. But this one was made by a was this one was made a priest with an oath by the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind, you are a priest forever. This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're able, I invite you to stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. They came to Jericho. And as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind baker, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said to him, and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, which we're going to sing in two parts, the first four verses before the sermon and the final three uh, just after. And um, the praise singers are going to get us started Uh, By singing the first verse for us, we will join in for verses 2, 3, and 4.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who guarantees for you a better covenant. Amen. The sermon text is from Hebrews 7, which reads, This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Will you pray with me, please? Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The theme of the book of Hebrews is something better. We all need something better. And Hebrews delivers that to us because Jesus is the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament promises in this wonderful book, our best Old Testament commentary. And Hebrews chapter 7 promises that Jesus is the guarantor of a better covenant. And that's no small statement because of the amazing covenants that God cuts with his people throughout the generations. And as you know, the foundation of covenant language in the Bible comes from Genesis chapter 15. That's when God cuts a covenant with Abraham. To establish this covenant, though, animals are killed. Throats are slit. Blood is poured. In fact, the animals, they're cut right in half in Genesis 15. One half on either side of a pathway for the two halves on either side and for the people to walk through. The idea is both of the covenant partners would walk on this pathway between the two halves of the animals with this implication. If I break my end of the covenant, you have all the authority to kill me, slit my throat, and pour out my blood. Covenants were blood-filled stuff. In Genesis 15, God in his part, in, with, and under the flaming torch and the, the boiling pot, passes between the two halves. In doing so, the Lord says, if I break my end of the covenant, you have all the authority to kill me, slit my throat, and pour out my blood. But Abraham, do you remember what he does in Genesis 15? Answer, nothing. The Bible says in Genesis 15 that Abraham sleeps through the entire event, much like one of my sermons or confirmation classes. No, no, <laughs> not that. These students were always ready, but Abraham, he was sleeping. And he wasn't just sleeping. The Hebrew word used to describe his sleep is tardima, and that's significant. Because remember Adam, when he was asleep in chapter 2? He was also in a deep tardima sort of sleep, so deep of a sleep that God was able to pull a rib from his side and with the earth of the ground fashion his helper and dear wife Eve. So Abraham is completely out of touch in a very deep sleep. So who's the one who makes the covenant commitment? God does. Abraham sleeps through everything. And four times in Genesis 17, we're reminded that this is a berit olam, an everlasting covenant. Why? Well, it's based on God's faithfulness and not Abraham's. So Hebrews 7 picks up on this covenant sort of language, but it takes the covenant not from Abraham, but to God's covenant with his people when he brought them up out of Egypt through Moses at Mount Sinai. 
God's covenant with Israel at Mount Sinai was a bilateral covenant based on God's law. In it, God commits Himself to His people as their God, and He gives them access to Himself and all of His blessings through the service of the priest in the tabernacle. The people, though, they keep this command, this covenant, by keeping God's commands. They're demanded to observe the commandments of God and His whole law. Now, if Israel failed to keep God's law, there was a way, though. There was a way forward. The priest made a sacrifice to forgive them and restore their place among God's people. But if they finally and fully turned away from God and His law, then God likewise would turn away from them and remove them from the promised land. In the end, God's people treated His covenant like a contract and were exiled to Babylon. They broke the covenant. Remarkably still, the Lord swears an oath for covenant breakers. And He swears an oath through the blood of His Son, Jesus. And God's oath means that He cannot go back on His word. According to the writer of Hebrews, Jesus is your high priest forever, who has ascended on high, who has entered the holy of holies in the heavenly temple with his blood to ensure that you are forgiven. Hebrews 7 says, this makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. But I know you've all been asking yourselves, how in the ancient world do guarantors work? Well, I'll tell you all about it. In the ancient world, it was commonplace for a wealthier person to offer some of his assets as legal collateral for someone, for a friend or a client who was in some sort of contract or had a debt of a loan. So this guarantor was there because if the friend or the client defaulted on his payments, his legal sponsor, his guarantor, who made the guarantee of the payment, would be legally bound to pay all of the rest of the debt. He would pay the debt for his friend. Dear friends in Christ, you have the guarantee of a better covenant. Because God doesn't demand a guarantee from you to make sure that you will always make your payments without default. He does something radically different. He provides His dear Son, the risen Christ Jesus, as a guarantee of what He pledges to pay for all that we are lacking. Jesus has paid your debt free of charge through His death and resurrection. And God the Father doesn't offer something that belongs to Jesus. Remarkably, the Father offers Jesus Himself as your guarantee. And all of this, remember, is under oath. That guarantees that God's better covenant for you is in Jesus. God can't go back on His Word. What great news. What better news could there be for you and for me and for all people? I always tell my confirmation students, and you've probably forgotten this already by now, so I'll tell it to you once more and to all of you. I say, you know what? If there's ever a time in your life where, where for whatever reason you find yourself away from God's church, and, and, and for a time, or maybe even a long time, and then you think, oh, I've got to go back to church. I need the Lord's forgiveness. I need to be comforted by God's Word. I need to be around and in and among God's people. And then the devil will say, well, you can't go back there. No, no, no. no. Not after you've been gone that long. Not after all the things that you've done. They won't accept you there. Don't believe it for a second. 
you always come back home. You always come back to Jesus and his church. Why? He alone guarantees your forgiveness. How? Well, that's what Hebrews 7 tells us about your great high priest who guarantees a better covenant for you. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need like those high priests of the temple in Jerusalem to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. Hebrews 7 says that Jesus makes up for all that we lack with five outstanding qualities. First, unlike our half-hearted devotion to God and fickle reliance on His mercy, well, you know how that is, right? When things are great, thanks be to God. When I'm happy, I love the Lord. And when things aren't good, not so much. With our half-hearted devotion to God and fickle reliance on His mercy, Jesus, though, He's holy. He's devout. He's completely reliant on God's grace and utterly devoted to Him. Unlike our guilt and corruption, He's a model of spiritual integrity. And second, since Jesus is without evil, nothing alienates Him from God. Third, unlike us with sins and bodies and hearts, hearts and bodies that are tainted by sin, Jesus is pure. He's undefiled. And because Christ is without sin, He is pure before God in His heart. Fourth, we join sinners by sinning with them, but Jesus is completely separated from sinners. Now, don't get the mistake that Jesus separates himself because he's shunning sinners over here. The Bible tells us that Jesus only came to be with sinners. He only surrounds himself with sinners. He only invites sinners like us to his table to partake of his body and blood, but he is separated from sinners because he won't join sinners in sinning with them. Finally, unlike us who are earthbound and far from God, Jesus is the only man who has become higher than the heavens. He reigns at God's right hand right now over you and me and all creation as your king and great high priest. And most wonderfully, because he no longer restricts himself to the created order of the world, Jesus transcends the limits of time and space. He bridges the gulf between God and us, and he gives us access to heaven right here on the earth. When? Right now. When God's people are gathered around His Word, as you rejoice in the forgiveness of your sins and remembering your baptism, saying, I'm God's own child, I gladly say it, I'm baptized into Christ. And as you rejoice that He's given you His body and blood to give you life and salvation. Right now and right here, heaven has come to earth in this normal building right here on East Avenue in Kitchener. Heaven has come to earth because Jesus is with you right now by his word and promise. As you dear confirmation students, Isaiah and Jack and Cora and Leighton and Jackson, as you'll taste and see in just a few moments, Jesus gives you a better covenant meal through his very body and blood shed for you and broken for you. It guarantees that despite breaking his covenant, all that has been lacking in your service, all of your sins, and even eternal death, all of it has been paid for by Jesus. 
And guess what? Because He actually serves you in the body, because Jesus ascended right now on high, has flesh and bones, just like you and I have flesh and bones, because He serves in the body as your high priest forever. Jesus guarantees that you receive now and on the last day the fullness of your salvation bodily. You see, dear ones in Christ, when Jesus returns, your souls and bodies will be perfectly glorified. You will be immortal. You'll share in the full glory of Jesus forever. How can you be sure? Jesus' death and resurrection guarantee it. He is your eternal intercessor, constantly bringing your prayers to God with Him as He approaches the throne of grace. Dr. John Kleinig, a Lutheran pastor in Australia, speaks about this in his Hebrews commentary so beautifully. He writes, The one who occupies the highest place of all, higher than the heavens, Jesus, uses His power to help us, the lowly people on the earth who are otherwise doomed to death and destruction. Jesus brings you with Him to God by His intercession for you so that He can provide you with a better and eternal covenant. This is the remarkable, unbreakable, and better covenant for you through the blood of Jesus, your great high priest forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we sing verses 5 through 7 of the infant priest was holy born. seated for just a few moments for some parish announcements this morning. We won't uh, uh, go into every little detail of everything that's happening here at Holy Cross over the next little while, uh, but just draw your attention to uh, a few things that are happening. Uh, First of all, um, tomorrow morning, uh, Rachel Fergan will begin uh, service here at the church as our temporary ministry assistant. We all know that after 35 years, uh, Debbie Pritchard is retiring in a couple of weeks, and uh, Rachel is going to step into the position on a temporary basis for the next few months as we... uh, Think a little bit about what that position uh, needs to be going forward, and uh, and uh, uh, we look forward to welcoming uh, Rachel uh, to the office tomorrow. Uh, also, a reminder that next Sunday you get an extra hour sleep 
uh, before church so that you can stay awake during the sermons. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and, and so just, just be aware of that. There are a number of other things coming up in the congregation over the next uh, week, including our men's breakfast. There's a big announcement about that. Uh, the rake and run is coming for youth. Operation Christmas Child, all these things are in the bulletin. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. The only other thing I want to kind of just comment on for just a very, very brief moment is that uh, beginning in two weeks, uh, you as uh, people of the congregation are going to be invited to participate in an online survey. Uh, this is something that we're doing, uh, thinking of the future. And uh, this is a, a survey that is particularly designed uh, for churches to use, uh, churches of, of our brand and uh, confession, uh, that looks into a whole number of factors as to the overall health and strength and viability of our congregation going forward. And the board of directors uh, have uh, asked that we uh, participate in this survey, and I can assure you that uh, the, uh, the material that we get back will be... Uh, Plenty of, there will be plenty to discuss at the January voters meeting and at other times where we uh, look together for what uh, God has in store for us here in this place as we move beyond our 75th anniversary last year into uh, what God, uh, the future God has prepared for us. So we'll talk more about that uh, in the days and weeks ahead. Other than that, uh, everything is in the bulletin, as I've said a couple times. If you're sitting near the center aisle this morning, there's a friendship pad there. Uh, if you don't mind filling that in and uh, passing it to the folks in your row so they can do the same thing. And back to the center aisle again before you leave. If you're online and don't mind signing in using your Gmail account or sending an email to the office this mo uh, tomorrow morning to let us know that uh, you were part of the worship service, uh, we're always thankful to know who uh, shared with us in that way. That's it uh, for parish announcements this morning. As you're able, I invite you to stand as our offering is presented. We give you but your own and any gift we bring. All that we have is yours alone, a trust from you, our King. Each of the petitions in our prayers this morning end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond by saying, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender care, especially on this Reformation Festival and Confirmation Sunday. We thank you for the gift of your Son and the gift of faith that you have given to us. We thank you for bringing James Douglas Palmer into your family this morning through holy baptism, and also for your work confirming the faith in our young people. We ask you to bless Isaiah, Jack, Cora, Layton, and Jackson. Keep them and all of us steadfast in this Christian faith and bring forth the good fruit in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of grace, keep us steadfast in your word. And prevent our wayward hearts from following false gospels that lead away from you. Continue to provide your church with faithful pastors and church workers to lead us in purity and joy. That we are saved by your grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, remember all who face adversity of any kind. We lift up to you particularly the family of Valerie Toth, whose funeral was this past Monday, and the family of George Roussel, father of Brad, Denise, and Mark, whose funeral will be held on Wednesday, that the Lord comfort them with a sure and certain hope of the resurrection to life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also lift up to you those who look for healing, including Janet Cumbie as she continues her recovery from surgery, baby Daniel Dolson, who remains in hospital in Stratford, Mary Coleman in palliative care, as well as Bernie Drung, Claude Masticott, Francesca Welker, Brenda Longstaff, Shirley Carter, Gail Craft, and Elka Tyke. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve your church, O Lord and each of us as members of the body of Christ. 
that we may not surrender the true gospel for any reason, but be kept in this faith and fear throughout the days of our earthly pilgrimage until that day when we and all your people shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the reward you have prepared for us and for all who have loved his appearing. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This time the congregation may be seated for the rite of confirmation. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age." You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold the Old and New Testaments of the Holy Scriptures to be the inspired Word of God? Do you confess the teachings of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the Scriptures as you have learned to know them from the small catechism and our confirmation classes, to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah Emil Gilartes, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life 
everlasting. Amen. Isaiah, I give you this text from Holy Scripture as a remembrance of your confirmation. Hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ from John chapter 8. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jack Jeremy Knudsen, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Jack, I give you this text from Holy Scripture as a remembrance of your confirmation. Hear these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Cora Rose Kuhlman, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Cora, I give you this text from Holy Scripture as a remembrance of your confirmation. Hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Leighton Richard Massacott, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And Leighton, I give you this text of Holy Scripture. As a remembrance of your confirmation, the words that our Lord spoke to Joshua long ago, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Jackson Frank Zaz, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And Jackson, I give you these words from Holy Scripture as a remembrance of your confirmation from our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 14. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness 
in bringing these, your sons and daughter, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. As you're able, I invite you to stand for prayer and the benediction. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout the days of our pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We remain standing as we join together to sing our closing hymn. This morning, the song, O Church, Arise, printed on page 8 in the service folder. <laughs> 